This is the next example of an experimental design question and this um, will cover part of the problem solving aspects of hierarchy and biology. So this is question two from the 2018 paper. Um, again, it's an enzyme question because they quite frequently are. And you should go through this and identify what this experiment is actually telling you. Okay, so an investigation was carried out to investigate the effect of inhibitor concentration. So they're changing the concentration of inhibitor which is why they've got that on their x-axis, or they will have on their x-axis in the graph, and on the left-hand side of the table. And they're looking at saying what effect that has, inhibitor concentration has, on the activity of an enzyme which breaks down alcohol in liver cells. So they set up six test tubes with a piece of liver, some alcohol, and different concentrations of inhibitor. Okay, they were left for 30 minutes, and they were left at 37 degrees. And the final concentration of alcohol in each test tube was then measured. So before I even do the, the, the question, what we have to understand is what is going on in this experiment. So they are given this, or they're in this test tube they have set up 100% alcohol. Okay, and they're expecting that piece of liver to have an enzyme in it that breaks down alcohol. So when that enzyme is active and not inhibited, alcohol concentration will drop. When the enzyme is inhibited, so when that liver is being inhibited, the enzyme within it has been inhibited, that enzyme will no longer break down that alcohol. Okay, and therefore that alcohol concentration will remain the same. Okay, so now we've kind of understood what's going on in this experiment. Now the first part of this question has to state two variables, not already mentioned, so therefore not discussed already, that should be kept constant in this. Now they've already stated the duration of that experiment, so you cannot use that. They've already stated temperature, so you cannot use that. And they've already stated that they're changing inhibitor concentration. So you can't use that. Okay. And then as a last one, they're measuring the final alcohol concentration. So you can't use the final alcohol concentration. Okay. So what haven't they said? Well, first of all, they've not said volumes. Okay. Now they've not said the volume of the alcohol. Or the volume of the inhibitor. Okay, so both of those you could include as one mark. Okay, so volumes are one mark. They've not talked about the liver at any point at all, so mass or type of liver would have to be kept constant, otherwise that wouldn't be a fair and a valid experiment. They've not talked about the type of alcohol, so that would be one mark for that massive liver one. So the alcohol, different types of alcohol might cause a different effect. So type of alcohol would be one mark. They've not also said about type of inhibitor, so that could be another mark. And um, the type would be the same mark. These would be linked. Okay. They've not said anything about pH, which affects enzyme activity. So that would be important. So the pH of solution, that solution that's in that test tube would be another one. And finally, they've said about the final concentration of alcohol being measured, but they've not at any point told you what the starting alcohol concentration was. I've just guessed that. Okay. So the starting or initial concentration. And notice how I'm underlining these initial alcohol concentration. So any of these would get you a mark. Okay, part B is about inhibitors, so that's a knowledge question, so I'll leave that out. The next part is plotting a graph. Okay, so again, we have a y-axis at the side and an x-axis along the bottom. So whatever they are changing, whatever's on the left-hand side of the table, here, goes along the bottom of the graph. 
So fortunately enough, I've got another example of this so I can just move this over a bit to show us here, okay? So inhibitor concentration is in millimoles and our final alcohol concentration, percentage of initial concentration, is then up the side, okay? That would be our y-axis. So label on the bottom. Inhibitor concentration. Okay, small m and then large m. Okay, up the side, our y-axis is our final alcohol concentration. And that is in percentage of initial concentration. Okay, so then we have to put our, um, our add our scales onto these. So our inhibitor concentration goes from 0 0.5 up to 5.5. Okay, so it makes sense for us to start at 0 at this point. And then we could go up um, to the highest of perhaps 6. So this would be 1.0, then 2.0. I'm using these lines here. That would be 4.0, then 5.0, and then 6.0. Now this graph actually caught a lot of people out in the first year when it came out. Because when they did the divisions, they did... Um, 0 0.05 or something silly like that in here. The numbers aren't quite correct. So make sure that when you're doing the scale, you would have 0 0.5 here, then 1.5, then 2.5 if you were going to go along with all the numbers. Okay. Then up the side, we have final alcohol concentration from 20 to 100%. So again, if our scale would work and we can fit it, we can do from 0 right the way up to 100 and going up in 10s. Okay, so then our values that we've got to plot, 0 0.5 would be to 20, and 1.5 is at 28. Now notice your scale, then each box would be worth 2. 2.5 would be 60. And again, this is the reason why people mixed it up, is because they weren't using the big lines that they'd labelled. Um, they're using different lines, so therefore they kind of stumbled on this. 3.5 is 96. And then the next two, 4.5 is 100, and then 5.5 is 100. And again, have another look. Join the points by the centre of those points. It's difficult to see past the phone. And then, like that. So this double line that I've messed up, what I'll do is I'll rub it out and fix it. Please don't leave a messed up line. This is why we do things in pencil for a graph. Okay, so my points are plotted. Notice how I've not joined this to zero because there is no point on the table where it says zero and zero. Okay, one mark for your scales and your labels, and one mark for your correctly plotted line. Now the next question, which is fairly or a fairly common question, is using data to describe the relationship between concentration of inhibitor and enzyme activity. Okay, now this up the side does not tell us. It, well, it's not what they're asking for. They're not asking for enzyme activity. They're not asking for a final alcohol concentration. They're asking for enzyme activity. Okay? So basically, you've got to make a relationship between more alcohol, meaning less activity. So if we think about what we talked about before, if the enzyme, inhibited, if the enzyme is inhibited, the alcohol concentration would stay high. Okay? So when alcohol concentrations drop, that enzyme is more active. Okay, so this is quite a complex question. So 
you're going to have to include values from your x-axis, okay, so your inhibitor concentrations, and you're going to have to relate that to endem activity. So first of all, you would have the same start until all these questions. So you would say, as something increases, and what they're changing is inhibitor concentration, so as inhibitor concentration increases, okay, from a couple of points, you'll have to say uh, something about it, okay? So this inhibitor concentration is 0 0.5 here, okay, where you get your first value. So from 0 0.5 to your next point where it stops and changes, which is 4.5 millimoles, okay, so mm. Enzyme activity, okay, so not phenyl alcohol concentration, it's enzyme activity that we're talking about because that's what it says in the question. Enzyme activity changes. Now, it would look like it increases, okay, but it's actually not. Remember what I said before, if that enzyme is more inhibited, it breaks down less alcohol. So the alcohol concentration would actually stay high. If it's breaking it down, it'll be low. So this is where the enzyme is more active here. This is where it's less active. Okay, so as we increase the inhibitor concentration, it actually becomes less active. Enzyme activity decreases. Okay, now beyond the next point, okay, so beyond our 4.5, We have to make a statement about enzyme activity. So again, enzyme activity, now if we look at this from beyond 4.5 to here, enzyme activity remains the same. Okay, it's not dropping or it's not increasing, it's remaining the same. So for this question, the first mark you'll get is for your trend, okay? So as something increases, decreases, or stays the same, something increases, decreases, or stays the same. So something will go up, something goes down, something goes up. Okay, so your concentration continues to go up, then that stays the same. So these are your directions. So increases, decreases, stays the same. That would be one mark. Your next point would be for your values and your units. is one mark. And this is pretty much always the case when it says using data. Now, if you don't do the graph, this makes it much more difficult to actually see where the pattern is and to link your data to what is actually shown. So for these questions, make sure that you're actually answering the question. It talks about endemic activity. It doesn't talk about phenyl alcohol concentration. So be very careful that you're actually answering the question they're asking. Okay, and that'll finish off question two from 2018.